Amazing Kamal! You're just in time for an art amazing experience! Welcome to the magnificent world of Asian arts, only here on Depa TV. Get ready with your paper, pen, and self-learning module as we discover the artistic prowess of Asians and listen to the stories told by their masterpieces. I am Serafi and I heart Asia. In the previous quarter, you have learned the elements and principles of art in East Asia. As we go on with this new quarter, you are going to appreciate more Asian arts as you engage yourself in developing your effective skills through feeling the mood, understanding the meaning, and deriving the idea behind the beautiful artworks and crafts that will be presented to you. Our Art Asian experience today will deepen your understanding and appreciation of the elements and characteristics of arts and crafts inspired by the cultures of South Asia, West Asia, and Central Asia. You will surely enjoy the spectacular, art-fantastic, and art-authentic masterpieces as you perform the challenges that the Art Master will give you. Hello Archons! Before we head on to our art trip, let us be familiar with the countries in South Asia, West Asia, and Central Asia. Are you ready? Let the art challenge begin! All you have to do is to guess what country each landmark represents. You have 5 seconds to answer each item. Number 1. Take a look at this one. Where do you think can we find this landmark? Did you answer India? You're right! That's the famous Taj Mahal. The Taj Mahal is located on the right bank of the Yamuna River in a vast Mughal garden that encompasses nearly 17 hectares in the Agra district in Uttar Pradesh. How about this landmark? Do you know where we can find this one? If your answer is Pakistan, you're correct! That's the Faisal Mosque, Faisal Avenue, Islamabad, Pakistan. The Faisal Mosque is the largest in Pakistan, located in the national capital city of Islamabad. Completed in 1986, it was designed by the Turkish architect Vidat Dalokai, shaped like a desert Bedouin's tent. It is an iconic symbol of Islamabad throughout the world. Number 3. Take a look at this one. What do you think? Did you answer Kazakhstan? Perfect! That's the Baiterek Tower. The Kazakh word Baiterek translates literally to mean tall poplar, as in the tree. That's what makes Baiterek Tower such a fitting name for a national monument steeped in symbolism and meaning connecting the old world to the modern in a celebration of progress. How is your score? If you got it all correctly, great job! If not, it's okay. You can still do better in the next art challenges. I am the art master and I heart Asia. Sir Rafi, back to you. Thank you, art master. In the first quarter, we were accompanied by Aki and Tina as we traveled across Southeast Asia. For this quarter, the art genie will be with us as we tour around South, West, and Central Asia. Archons. Don't you know that India has a long and complicated history that dates back thousands of years? India was the only major Asian culture known to have been visited by the ancient Greeks and Romans, and it has captivated attention from people around the world ever since as an exotic and mysterious land. Now, let us travel back to the periods of Indian art. Let us travel back to 3900 BCE to 1200 CE during the ancient period. Some evidence of the early civilization are bronze and copper statuettes and steatite seals which show vigor and concern for surface texture as constantly characterized in Indian art. The Ajanta Caves in Maharashtra, India are a series of 30 rock-cut cave monuments that date from the 2nd century BCE to 600 CE and contain paintings and sculptures that are considered masterpieces of Buddhist religious art, as well as frescoes that are similar to those found in Sri Lanka. 
The group of some 30 caves was excavated between the 1st century BCE and the 7th century CE and consists of two types, Katyas or sanctuaries and Viharas or monasteries. Although the sculpture, particularly the rich ornamentation of the Katya pillars, is noteworthy, it is the fresco type paintings that are the chief interest of Ajanta. These paintings depict colorful Buddhist legends and divinities with exuberance and vitality that is unsurpassed in Indian art. The caves were designated a UNESCO World Heritage Site in 1983. In the classical period from the 5th to 6th centuries, the image of Shiva, the destroyer, evolved into Shiva, the cosmic dancer. Represented by a four-armed figure with one hand holding the fire with which he destroys, another holding a drum, which is the first sound heard in the world during creation, the third arm pointing up in a reassuring gesture, and a fourth arm points down to the dwarf in which he dances on. Within the Hindu religion, religion cosmos, Shiva is one of the strong triad of divine energy. There is Brahma, the benevolent creator of the universe. There is Vishnu, the sagacious preserver. Then there is Shiva, the destroyer. Destroyer in this sense is not an entirely negative force, but one that is expansive in its impact. In Hindu religious philosophy, all things must come to a natural end so they can begin anew. And Shiva is the agent that brings about this end so that a new cycle can begin. The Islamic Ascendancy in 1192 to 1757 or the Transitional Period was the period of evolution from Vedism into Hinduism or Brahmanism. The two great Indian epics, the Mahabharata and the Ramayana emerged in this period. The Mahabharata is an epic poem with 100,000 stanzas divided into 18 books or parvas. It is the world's largest single literary work. It is set in a legendary era thought to correspond to the period of Indian culture and history in the 10th century BC and was originally composed in the ancient language of Sanskrit sometime between 400 BC and 400 AD. The Ramayana is an ancient Sanskrit epic that follows Prince Rama's quest to rescue his beloved wife Sita from the clutches of Ravana with the help of an army of monkeys. It is traditionally attributed to the authorship of the sage Valmiki and dated from around 500 BCE to 100 BCE. During the 16th century, the Mughal period contributed to the richness of Indian culture, particularly in painting and architecture. The Taj Mahal was created in 1632 by Shah Jahan in remembrance of his wife Mumtaz Mahal, with construction beginning in 1632 and ending in 1648, with a mosque, guest house and main gateway on the south and the outer courtyard on the north. The Taj Mahal is considered to be the greatest architectural achievement in the whole range of Indo-Islamic architecture. Its recognized architectonic beauty has a rhythmic combination of solids and voids, concave and convex, and light shadow, such as arches and domes, further increase the aesthetic aspect. The color combination of lush greenscape, reddish pathway, and blue sky showcases the monument in ever-changing tints and moods. The relief work in marble and inlay with precious and semi-precious stones make it a monument apart. If India has a Taj Mahal, we Filipinos have the ruins, which is located in Talisay City, Negros Occidental. It was built way back in the early 1900s and is considered one of the most famous heritage landmarks in the country. It is dubbed the Taj Mahal of Negros because of its history of love and tragedy that is similar to that of the Taj Mahal. See you again next time, Archens! I am the Art Genie and I Heart Asia. Let us continue the Indian tour with Diwali. 
It is celebrated by Hindus in India and all around the world in October or November. It is the Hindu New Year and is either a three-day or five-day holiday depending on where you come from. It is a very exciting and colorful holiday where homes are cleaned to welcome the new year and windows are opened so that the Hindu goddess of wealth, Lakshmi, can enter. Hindus believe that she cannot enter a house which is not lit up. So every household burns special Diwali clay lamps or diyas to light the way for the goddess, which is why the holiday is also known as the Festival of Lights. Now let's talk about Rangoli. The materials used in the Rangoli patterns of today give either a very flat appearance or a 3D effect. Rangoli designs include geometric patterns, the swastika, lotus, trident, fish, conch, creepers, leaves, trees, flowers, and animals. Are you ready for your last hour challenge? Here is the Art Master. Archons, for your last art challenge, I will help you make your rangoli using paper plates, colored craft papers, magazine pages, scissors, pencil, and glue. Are you ready? Let the art challenge begin. Here are the steps. Step 1. Select 5 to 6 colored craft papers for this project. Use color for one shape. Step 2. Trace the shapes on the craft papers with a pencil and cut them out nicely. Step 3. Grab a paper plate, the shape cutouts, and glue. Step 4. Glue a round shape cutout on the center of the plate. Step 5. For the next layers, alternate the shapes used. Make sure to glue the pointed shapes outward. Step 6. Just keep adding more shapes until the paper is filled. Remember, the more colorful and more shapes you add to the rangoli, the better. Step 7. Use scissors to cut out a zigzag border on the plate to make it more festive. Step 8. Allow the glue to dry or add more details if you want to. And voila! You're done with your rangoli. Post your artwork on social media using the hashtag iHeartAsia to get the chance to be included in our virtual exhibit at the end of the quarter. I am the Art Master and I Heart Asia. Thank you, Art Master, Art Genie, and great job, Archens. I hope you took photos of yourselves while doing the art challenges with us. Post them on Facebook and use the hashtag I Heart Asia. Make sure to include your significant learning as the caption for your post. May you have realized the role of arts in enriching and promoting our culture traditions, and identity as Asians. Keep on watching Japan TV. I am Sir Rafi, and I heart Asia.